ان الحمد لله نحمده نستعينه ونستغفره ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساء من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعصه ما فلا يضر الا نفسه اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه امين يا رب العالمين so i just recited to you the second ayah of surah al-baqarah which states ذلك الكتاب this is the book لا ريب in which there is no doubt فيه هدى للمتقين in it is guidance for the people who have awareness of God so about this particular statement ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه I want to dig on this you could say to talk about its different dimensions the different dimensions of its meanings after all this is one of the first statements of the book in the quran in fatiha you ask allah for guidance so then allah says ذلك الكتاب this is the book لا ريب فيه in which there is no doubt if any human being was to come up with a criteria of what he would call the book uh, excuse me stop talking If anyone was to come up with a criteria of what is the book maybe someone will say the criteria of the book should be the book that is most read in the world if that is the case then we would say ذلك الكتاب this is the book that is the most read book in the world is there any doubt If someone says the criteria should be the most memorized book then again we would say ذلك الكتاب this is the book is there any doubt there's no number 2 when it comes to memorizing and when there is no number 2 when it comes to the most read book If someone was to also ask as a criteria What is the book? If someone said, "Okay, what about a book that it is in a certain language but people even its accessibility is such. The book is so accessible. It is so easy that even people from other languages would be able to read that book that we would again say ذلك الكتاب this is the book لا ريب في there is no number 2 because the arabs and the non arabs they all read the quran equally well if we said ذلك الكتاب لا ريب في this is the book the book what would be the criteria for the book particularly in reference to the last part of the verse which says hudan lil muttaqin it is guidance for people that have taqwa when this ayah was being revealed the quran had not yet been complete and therefore the quran made a prophecy about itself that it would be al kitab it would be a complete book surah al baqarah these verses of surah al baqarah they were being revealed after 
soon after the battle of Badr, these verses had already been revealed. And it, the Quran had yet, the, the revelation of the Quran had not yet come to a completion. So therefore, it was a prophecy. It was a forecast of the future. That there will come a time where it will be said, that today your deen, your law, your kitab has been complete. One of the meanings of the word deen is law. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Yusuf says, مَا كَانَ يَأْخُذُ أَخَاهُ فِي دِينَ الْمَلِكِ That Yusuf والسلام, could not take, just force his brother to stay with him just because he wanted to. He had to think of some way of finding an excuse that his brother would have to stay with him. وَمَا كَانَ يَأْخُذُ أَخَاهُ فِي دِينَ الْمَلِكِ The word deen means law, and the word kitab also means law. They're synonymous words. So ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابِ The Qur'an was saying this is the book, this would be a book before it was a book. In terms of it would be a law, a complete law for humanity. One of the aspects of this statement is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not say هَذِهِ الْكِتَابِ This is the book. But rather Allah says ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابِ That is the book to this Qur'an. Why? Because when it was being revealed, it was not yet in the form of a book. When it was being revealed, in the time of the Prophet, people were not carrying copies of Qur'an. In the time of the Prophet, they were not carrying books of Qur'an. The book, by the way, I want to make this clear, so this issue is a little bit clear, maybe some people need to know this. There was a copy, a mushab, we call it a mushab. Papers with a binding in the front and the back, that's a mushab. There was a mushab of the entire Qur'an in the house of Aisha radiallahu anha. How was that formed? The Prophet, whenever revelation came to him, there were 30 to 50 scribes who used to write down the revelation. And so the different companions of the Prophet had their own copies. Whoever was the scribe at that time when the revelation came, sometimes there were more scribes, sometimes there were less scribes when the Prophet used to dictate. These ayat have come to me. And the 40 to 50 people, sometimes 30 people, they would write down the ayat of the Quran. And a part of that part from every time it was revelation came and it was subscribed, a part of that would be kept in the house of Aisha radiallahu anha, that mushab. So when the Prophet passed away, Abu Bakr radiallahu anha, he, what he did was this. The Quran was already compiled, but he wanted to do this. He wanted that there be two scribes as witnesses for every ayah of the copy that the Prophet had in his house. So the, the, the Qur'an, there's a copy of the Qur'an in the house of the Prophet. Then their scribes, they had been writing down the Qur'an. So Abu Bakr says, okay, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Anybody write this down? So I need at least two scribes who have personally taken the dictation from the Prophet that they have written down, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Personally, two people who took the dictation from the Prophet, they come and also verify that this is the first verse, then the second verse, then the third verse, then the fourth verse. This happened for the entire Qur'an except for what, one verse. I can't go into the history of, the, of that right now. Then, this continued till the time of Uthman radiallahu Because the Qur'an, you know, like a i u, u can be u, dhamma, or wow, for example. I'm just giving an example. Or a could be alif or fatha, for example. So people were writing Qur'an on their own because now Uthman radiallahu anh, he was literally the king of maybe one third of the world at that time. Everything from the Oxus River all the way down to uh, close to Spain, to, to Morocco. So people were writing Qur'an and they were writing Qur'an differently. What Uthman radiallahu when he burned the Qur'ans, that event was not compiling the Qur'an. Compiling the Qur'an was done by the Prophet. 
verifying the copy in the house of the Prophet was done by Abu Bakr. So that they have one standard copy of the Qur'an. Then, Jami'ul Qur'an ala rasmul wahid. This is what Uthman did, radiallahu anhu. Bringing the people together on one rasm, one writing of Qur'an, one writing of Qur'an. That the Qur'an will only be written, every word, because sometimes you can spell different words differently. Even when the copy of the Qur'an was made, the standard copy that was made by Uthman radiallahu anhu, Ibn Mas'ud disagreed with him. We shouldn't spell this word like this, we should spell it like this. Phonetically, it would be the same. Phonetically, it would be the same word. You would read it the same way. But he wanted to disagree on how it was written. So anyway, so there was no difference as far as Qiraat was concerned. As far as difference of recitation, there was no difference. So, then that copy of Uthman was sent to the different parts of the Muslim world. That was the standard. Not only will you read Qur'an in a particular way, but from now on, writing Qur'an has to also follow some particular rules. That's why when we, we just don't have any type of writings, we have to either have the Mus'haf Uthmaniyya or the, the other Mus'haf that's very popular in the Indian, Indian subcontinent, the Kufi script, script. Okay, I was saying that it was a prophecy of the Qur'an. That when the Qur'an said, ذَٰلِكَ kitab, This is the book. That it was not yet in the form of a book. Rather, let me correct myself. ذَٰلِكَ kitab, That is the book. هَذَا means this. ذَٰلِكَ means that. It didn't say هَذِهِ kitab. This is the book. No. ذَٰلِكَ kitab. Because the Qur'an was not yet in the form of a book. And this was a prophecy, a forecasting of the future, where the Qur'an said, ذَلِكَ kitab, That is the book. This Qur'an will be in the form of a book in the future. Like the Qur'an said, ذَلِكَ رَجْعٌ بَعِيد. It refers to something in the future. ذَلِكَ رَجْعٌ بَعِيد. It's far off that we will be returned back to our life again. Some, it's a statement in the Qur'an that in the Day of Judgment, Will we be raised back to our ourselves again? This is this is something beyond beyond thought. So Allah referring to that, but the per, but it is being referred to in the future. When you are referring to something in the future, hada is for now, dalika is for later, dalika kitab. That is the book referring to the fact that the Quran is not in the form of the book in the form of a book today, but tomorrow everyone will have a copy of the Quran in the form of a book. This was a prophecy of the Qur'an. Then, the fact that this happened, and by the way, I want to also mention the second part, la right. there is no doubt. There are many words in the Arabic language that mean doubt. Shak means doubt. Dhan could also mean doubt. Dhan could mean a strong thought, and the word dhan could mean a weak thought. The word shak also means doubt. Raib also means doubt. Raib is a doubt that can be tested. So when you say, ذَلِكَ kitab, this is the book, in terms of the most read book, la raiba fi, there's no doubt. You want to check it out? Go ahead, check it out. This is the most read book in the world. ذَلِكَ kitab, this is the book that's the most memorized book. You want to check it out? You can check out if you have any doubt. There's, there, you can do a litmus test to see if that's true. ذَلِكَ kitab. This is the book that was an oral tradition. People used to recite it. The Sahaba had no copies of Qur'an. But it became a book. You can check it out. لا رايب في There's no doubt. You can, do, you can go and see if the Qur'an is now in the form of a book or not. But all these aspects are great about the Qur'an. The fact that the Qur'an forecasted about itself. The word Al-Kitab also means Law. I mentioned this slightly, but I referred to the fact that it was prophesizing it would become a book. But it also prophesized that the law of Muhammad وسلم, would be completed. Like Kutiba alaykum al Sayyam. Sayyam has been ordained, written for you, meaning done. Kutiba alaykum al Kitab. It has been written. Something is written by the king, means it's done. When it became al Kitab, it means the law would come down and Islam would be completed. So when it says, ذَلِكَ kitab, this is the book, or rather, that is the book, it was, let me also mention another point of Arabic grammar. ذَلِكَ comes for the future, yes. 
Dhalika also comes to emphasize Hadha. So Dhalika Kitab works both ways. It works as Hadhi Kitab emphasized Dhalika Kitab. Dhalika Kitab also means that is the book, meaning something of the future. But in this case, Dhalika Kitab, this is the book, this is the law, this is the complete book. Al Kitab, this is the complete final form of law, was a prophecy when no laws had yet been not been revealed. Surah Al Baqarah and the Surah Al Baqarah, the laws they were came after Surah Al Baqarah, Surah Al Imran, Surah Al Maidah, Surah Al Nisa. The laws of Islam they came after, but Allah forecasted that He would give the laws of Islam before the laws were given. All these aspects of Dalik Al Kitab Al Arabi are great, but the greatest aspect, Inshallah, I will talk about in my second khutbah. Aqulu Qawli Hada. أستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات إن الحمد لله نحمده نستعينه ونستغفره ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله يرفع بهذه أقواما ويدعو به آخرين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفكه قولي اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وزبنا الطباء وأرنا الباطل باطلا وزبنا اجتناب آمين يا رب This book is a historical miracle also because the Prophet said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Inna Allah yafra'u bihadhi aqwaman wa yad'u bihi akhari Allah will raise the nations because of this Qur'an and Allah will bring down nations because of this Qur'an History is witness History is witness and you can, there's no doubt because you can test it out. Read the pages of history and you will see. History is a witness to the fact that when Muslims were sincere to the book of Allah, they went up. Which naturally means in the course of events of history, if Muslims went up, then others had to come down. History is a witness to the fact that when Muslims left Quran, that the Muslims went down and naturally others had to go up. History is a witness to the fact that when we had people like Omar and Ali, we were going up. History is a witness to the fact that when we had philosophers influenced by Greek thought, infiltrating their Greek thought into the Muslim world where kings were making courts called Darul Hikmah, it used to be called Darul Hikmah where people started philosophizing ideas like Muhammad is good but Aristotle is better when that started happening then history is a witness that the Tatars came and brought the Muslim world down what we are going through today is not unique. This has already happened to us in a very devastating way in our historical past. History is a witness when people like Salahuddin Ayyubi came, who used to not go, not take any action against the Crusaders until he would hear the camps that he was in that people are at reciting Quran all night. He would delay if he would go out at night and not hear the recitation of Qur'an, he wouldn't strike the next day. If he saw the people have not come for the Fajr Salah in the masjid, he would delay things. He wouldn't think that they're ready. When Muslims rose back, that which through the Safids and then the, and then the Uthmani Empire, the Ottoman Empire, we were back, there was a while where we had begun to hold on to the Qur'an again. And then we left it. 
and then we are where we are today. History is a witness to the fact that the rise and the fall of the Muslim Ummah is directly proportionate to its relationship with the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابِ That is the book. لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ There's no doubt in it. If this is the book, you know, let me explain it to you this way, and I'll, and I'll say one or two more things and then we have to end. If a king has a dream, listen to what I'm saying. If a king has a dream, and in the dream, the king is told by God, there's a true religion out there. Find it. Find the true religion. There's a true religion out there. So the king wakes up. He's, 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 now what he does is, he says, okay, let me find out the true religion. He invites a Christian, a Muslim, a Buddhist, a Hindu, a Parsi, all the different religions, the philosophers, come. And now, he, everybody has to answer the question, why should I as a king, why should I as a king adopt your way of life, your religion? Why is it true? What would you say? What, forget about what the Christians would say, or what the... Jewish or the Hindu or the Farsi would say. But here is what a Muslim can say. A Muslim can say that this is a religion that whenever you were true to it, you dominated the world. This is a historical fact. This is a religion that whenever you were true to it, you rose above the others. This is a religion that when you failed to hold on to it, you would go down. But this is a religion that within 30 years from the Arabian desert occupied 30% of the world of that time. That is a miracle. I want to end by one last point regarding Quran. Of course, that al Kitab, I have discussed the different levels why it is so miraculous. Even the statement that Allah begins the Quran with this statement, that al Kitab. Everything from that this was not even a for, in a book form at that time. To the historical relationship this book has, there is a divine law upon the Muslims, which Allah calls Sunnatullah. Walan tajida sunnatullahi tabdila, walan tajida sunnatullahi tahwila. You will never find the Sunnah of Allah. The law of Allah will never change. When Bani Israel, the former Muslim Ummah, the Muslims before us, Bani Israel. When they were given the book and they were true to the book, Allah said to them, Inni alameen, I have favored you over all of the people. But when those same people, they left the book of Allah, Allah said,